Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from uh, the UK, from the US, from South Africa, and from Denmark. So uh, good to see you. And uh, while we're waiting for Jonathan and Marianne to join us, uh, Jamie, are you online? There was Jonathan. Jamie is there. Right. Jamie, uh, I must admit that I am uh, I'm quite excited about how much you have been on for our sessions this week. How, how has it been for you? I can't hear you. Just turn on the sound, please. Okay, basic error. Get that out of the way early. <laughs> so, I should make a sign I, I, for the next time. <laughs> yeah, uh, Morton, Jean, it's it's been really good. Uh, you know, we, we we've got a vested interest in lots of different elements of the inkjet world, uh, both from a, a partner perspective, but also from our customers. And I think what we've seen, or what I've seen certainly in the session so far, have been really uh, really good. Great content. Really nice to see customers getting involved as well with their uh, with their proof statements of what the market is doing, what the mm -hmm. OEMs are providing. So uh, yeah, well done to you guys, and uh, certainly well done to all the presenters uh, as well. Yeah, I, I agree with you, and and I, I I'm not commenting on our own execution of it, but I, I'm commenting on that. I believe that the uh, the speakers and and the combination of all these things have just uh, for me been mind blowing. I think everybody, I mean to be honest, everybody is kind of webinar out, and you know, Jonathan and I we spoke about okay, how many attendees can we expect for something like a PDF optimization or <laughs> XMPI or uh, to see how a paper manufacturer put. I mean, uh, with all due respect. I think the value is that people, you know, when we get this dense amount of content, then the content is available. If the content is not available, then you can't learn from it, right? Yeah. Right. You, you right. Have to uh, and, okay, great. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. so, um, I, and I just, uh, Marianne's going to join us as soon as uh, uh, her technology catches up. So, Morton, you know, this is the fun of live events, right? You know, so one of the things I guess I just wanted to make sure people know as we get started and we're waiting for people to log in is, uh, you know, this is, we, we wanted to be really thoughtful about the content we put together. So you're going to notice that we look a little different in the in the video that we're going to play because um, my laptop's rebooted. Marianne's is having trouble connecting. There she is, the beautiful Marianne. Sterling. Sterling. She has her coffee in the in the in the machine. But Morton, the the, the goal of, of these great events is knowing that you have a global team. And so we've got Jamie, and we've got you, and Jean, and we've got all these great partnerships. And so we really hope people are going to learn something from this event and take away next steps. I mean, that's really our goal with this: is whether you you do business with Solomar or not in the future, we hope that what you hear here will be um, pertinent to you, right, in any walk of life in the print and software industry. It is uh, definitely a very good uh, point that you raise there, Jonathan. And um, Mary, and we have, we have, I think it's the third time we do a webinar together. Yeah. Um, and you are one of the, of the companies and, and persons that uh, continues coming back to this format that we offer. Can you just, I, I'm a little bit curious because uh, what, I mean, what has the takeaways been from you, uh, especially the smart factory we did uh, just before Christmas, I think it was a, it was a wonderful session. It was a kind of a geek, cheeky kind of session because it was complicated stuff, some of the things, right? But what, what does this uh, platform and these conversations bring to you and your audience? Well, yeah, we find great, um, just a, a great audience with, with you. Um, you know, we have a global cl uh, customers, we have global partners, uh, we have Jamie in the UK, and I'm sure he'll have lots of thoughts as well. But yeah, our goal is really to keep growing that base, keep connecting with them. And mm -hmm. this currently is really just one oh, an excellent way to do that, especially because we really can't visit everyone right now. And <laughs> we can't wait to get back out and see all the demo rooms because our software is in lots of them all around the world. And then we bring customers in, we love to do events. So this is really our way to reach out and you just have a great platform. And so thank you for including us. Oh, I'm always welcome. And I, 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 I forgot something very important here. Congratulations, you have an anniversary this year, right? Yes, <laughs> 30 yes, years in software. 30 years, wow. yes. I, I like to say I started as a very small child, so. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been here 30 years, yes, and uh, yeah, Jonathan, five years, and um, I'm trying to remember, Jamie, how long have you been with us? I'm, should, I'm, I'm the baby. That. You're the baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm mm -hmm. the baby. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Just over three and a half, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, very in 30 years, you look like you must have started when you were five. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Jean. Oh, you look glam. You look That's glam. what you do. And, and uh, you see, Jamie, you're one of the few people I can actually say I remember when you joined because, you know, yeah. I don't get to say that when Marianne's on the phone much. Well, I worked with Jamie for so many years. That's why I didn't remember um, when he moved over from Xerox. So, But I've worked yeah. with Jamie for many, many years. So we've been uh, good friends Mr. as well. Jamie. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Great. Um, this session uh, and or the, the entire week uh, has uh, or is about learn with us. Uh, I think when we started to use that expression as uh, our title for our webinars, I thought it was great because uh, it's for me, it's about a little bit less about marketing. I know that everybody needs to justify their investments and in both in time and money. But on the other hand, I think that especially a company like you, uh, Marianne, that must really appreciate the learning kind of thing because it's been part of the dna of solimar you have a extensive uh, library of of uh, cases and education uh, as part of the solimar uh, takeaway so um do, i mean from from a sales and marketing perspective do you think that that people will it's a leading question sorry but do you think that people <laughs> kind of take uh, if if you get if you get a basic knowledge and you get wiser and wiser all the time Will you then eventually make the right decisions yourself? <laughs> oh, definitely. I mean, we, we, yeah, we have Solomar University online, and uh, sorry, now my windows are popping up. Um, and so we've we've built this over many years, and um, yeah, our goal is really to educate people. So really, we we want to be. You know, you, we have people call us for all kinds of reasons. And if we don't have the answer or the product, I typically can direct you uh, to who does, who has the right answer, um, who has the best solution. And really, we only really want to place the right solutions with people. So mm -hmm. depending on what their need is at the time, um, you know, we really try to always work with folks and then and make a nice, um, you know, roadmap as to where they want to go on their journey. And yeah, we love to educate. So we try to really pull in other voices as well. So we have a customer advisory council you're going to hear from one of them in a little bit on, on his successes with his company and so yeah i think it's just the voice of the customer and you know we'd love to share that uh, with our partners as well and jonathan uh, i was so stupid because when we started talking about this uh, webinar i said it would be nice to see some of your stuff and you said yeah but it's kind of server side everything so it's like uh, <laughs> kind of uh, you don't have like uh, fancy uh, uh, uis uh, flashing to the audience so so this is way more about what it does on the computer side rather than what it does yeah. in, in your face kind of thing right well yeah I, I think the really important part for people to understand is um, it does have a good UI underneath and while we can demo it, it's not it's not meant for everyday use. We we, we proselytize, if you will, we, we hope people will understand that. We want you to set up these templates that are intelligent, that take work in every day. And it basically works, lights out behind the scenes. And yeah, you can go do things with it. You can solve challenges and exceptions. But what we hope is that customers really find this, this path to automation and letting their you know, employees do more important tasks uh, that that they're really valuable at than having to tinker around with our software. That the goal is really all this efficiency and optimization and improvement, so that you can bring more business in, and really, you know, see that success on the back end. And uh, we hope that that's what people will get out of this, no matter what industry they're in. You know, and and okay. Jamie, in a in a nutshell, what does Solimar do? We make customers successful I think uh, <laughs> whoa <laughs> that's a pretty bold statement I like that so that's yeah. just putting right. it out there <laughs> yeah absolutely Jonathan's touched on it already so is Marianne you know we, we deliver efficiency optimization uh, a whole raft of tools that a customer can uh, can dig into uh, as and when they need them to uh, to make their businesses better, to improve those efficiencies, and to get the ROI out of the you know the massive investments that people are making in hardware. You know, mm -hmm. tin is uh, tin is king is what many people say. You know, but and software is always the bridesmaid, never the bride. But uh, I think things are changing. You know, 
we, we've seen lots of good <laughs> stuff today about software and it's the key it's the thing that's going to do it is absolutely absolutely so let's agree. Uh, uh, dig into this uh, actually i said to you jonathan that it was uh, the last session because uh, we had to cancel uh, our live uh, print sample tv because of the weather situation in the us but uh, pat and i agree, agreed actually to talk a little bit afterwards anyway but you have the time and i will just uh, uh, tell pat to stay ready because uh, i know that you jonathan is, is in the same house so she knows as long as you keep talking there will be no way for her to get online right <laughs> you know i the family that plays and print together stays together so you know it is true. Oh, That's i've true. come from a print family so understood understood okay i will just click on the play video and then we have a conversation afterwards so uh, uh turn off sound and microphone and then we get back when the, the video is over all right all right. Well, so here we are, as Morton mentioned, we're talking about post-composition today and how that will hopefully drive a lot of success for your business in the future. And it, it comes to my mind that, you know, here we are with Jamie and Marianne and we're a big Solomar family. It comes to my mind that we live post-composition and workflow software every day of our lives. And maybe there's some of you out there that are going, what are you guys talking about? What is post composition? Is that composition with a post box on it? Or what is that? So Jamie, I think, you know, based that you are in the UK and familiar with the EU as well, where we're talking to a lot of people today, maybe you can help us position post composition. Be my pleasure, Jonathan, thanks. So, Post-composition and composition, they're two very different worlds, uh, as you know, but it, I think it's important that we uh, set a clear definition for that. Uh, some of our traditional customers in the transactional uh, print world and direct mail would be fairly familiar with, uh, with composition and post-composition environments. But, uh, you know, we're talking to a very wide audience nowadays. Uh, we're talking to packaging printers. We're talking to wide format, uh, general commercial digital printers. So I think it is important that we, uh, you know, we, we give some definition to the two worlds uh, because they've got very, very different uh, disciplines uh, and also, you know, different objectives as well. So let's just think about uh, composition to start with. Uh, it's, it's all about generating a document, whether that's a, an electronic communication, a printed piece, it could be a wall graphic, uh, it could be a multitude of things, but they have very specific tools that they use in that, uh, through those disciplines. So we think about document composition, things like XMPy, uh, Quadiant, all of the names that, we, that we're all very familiar with. We've got solutions for uh, data management, data warehousing, digital asset management, it could be storefronts or address cleansing. So these tools are very, very focused on creating content using templates and design packages to bring everything together to make the communication or printed piece. Uh, they're very, very focused. Customers have their own preferences and have made investments over the years as well. Uh, that they've put a lot of money into. So they don't necessarily want to change those systems. Uh, you know, I, I, I remember hearing in, in one of the conversations within the business that, you know, some of our customers have multiple versions of the same set of tools, you know, four, five, six, maybe more different composition tools that they use for specific applications to meet the needs of their customers. So composition is all about generating that document. Whereas what we find with post-composition uh, this sits after this process has been completed. And again, we have a different set of tools. We have very, very specific tasks that we look at. And we're very much focused on processes, workflow, and efficiency, and how we optimize print uh, to get the most out of the investments we've made. So we commonly hear terms like data optimization, file optimization, mm. indexing of documents, process automation, batching of workflows, uh, you know, even through to the world of tracking and being able to follow a job through from onboarding into the business all the way through the various manufacturing processes to when that document or that uh, manufactured piece goes out of the door. So very, very focused on a set of disciplines that aren't necessarily covered uh, by that composition uh, Discipline. I I want to I want to pop in and, and ask a question then uh, of of you and Marianne. Maybe I'll tee this one up to Marianne. 
does that mean that we tell people what composition systems they have to use? Like, so we're after them. Do we care what's happening? Really not at all. Um, our customers seem to use every possible composition tool, some that are 20, 30 years old, many homegrown. So the nice thing with Solomar Brains wow. is the ability for them to really choose all of their favorite tools, um, things that they have, things they might sunset eventually, as well as then devices. And so like we like to say, we make harmony out of disparate data, devices, and environments. So what we bring is the ability, this chemistry, uh, is the ability to really choose all of your favorite or needed applications, hosts, um, MIS systems, web to print systems, and uh, and devices, including finishing, and we make it all harmonious. Yeah, I think that's a really great point, don't you, Jamie? Because we don't want people to ever feel like they're post composition as we talk about all of these tools they might be able to leverage after something's created. We don't want them to ever feel like they have to worry about how it's created, right? right? Uh, you know, as I pointed out, people have ways of doing things that they're very used to and they've trained their people and their business has grown around those systems this is about increasing flexibility and the ability to react to changing conditions within the manufacturing steps uh, so no absolutely not we're not going to say you have to change this system or that system it's about us being able to integrate an interface into those uh, into those platforms I think one of the things that we, we've also got to uh, reference is the fact when jobs need to change, and we all know that you know, change is inevitable, if you have to keep going back to that composition and data management area, uh, what we call the composition zone, it's timely, it's costly. Reworking jobs takes an awful lot of time and effort if you have to keep going back up to composition. So what we do is we deliver a tool set that sits more in the manufacturing and the operations uh, zone of the business where people can be reactive. And it could be something simple that a particular mailing line has gone down and they need to divert work onto a different machine. However, that machine needs a different set of barcodes uh, to trigger its actions and functionality. We can do that very, very quickly through a set of tools that sit in manufacturing as opposed to up in data and composition. So that's a very, very simple example uh, of how we can help uh, give more flexibility to the customers. And it, for the commercial printers out there, Jamie, it might even be, um, you know, like a tray, different tray calls because your one machine has one set of standard papers or house papers loaded. And this other machine, you, by standardization, you have other stuff loaded, but you could quickly just change the file to pull the right tray as opposed to asking your people to do all these manual things to move paper around and Marianne you always say something funny about being an operator right uh, it, it's kind of a, a memory thing too it's like would I remember to put stuff right. back I would be, and, I would, and what I would kind be of the, problems does that the, cause yeah worst operator because I'd probably put the wrong paper on the wrong tray and for sure I would probably not program the DFE correctly so I see lots of work going on sometimes you know, to do tinkering on jobs and color and such on the DFE, sometimes on certain devices, you have to set it back or it will continue certainly color profiles once you set it one time. So we kind of say, you know, take, take the load and the, the pressure off of the operators, make it all automated, put it in the templatized tool. And then as you drive the data to whatever device is needed, the, the processes automatically fall into place. And they're all pre predetermined, um, we don't have to, you know, have guessing. And again, I would, I would make many mistakes. I would guarantee. <laughs> We're going to hear from one of our customers as part of this conversation uh, here later, but uh, there's actually a, a data point, Jamie, that just really triggered in my head when you were talking about how post-composition helps in the here and now, the reactive, the live, you know, day-to-day -day that that printers and print shop floors or print service providers have to, you know, deal with. And, and that's that one of our customers uh, out of the United States actually saw 50 hours, person hours, of savings by putting in post-composition solutions, including some automation and optimization type tools that, that are offered. And I just thought that was so crazy when you think that it was 50 hours a day or you know at, at a time, because you're talking about multiple people's person hours. And so you, you think about that 3,000 hours 
you know, uh, over a total of a period. And it was, it's just one of those things that we hear from customer after customer. And we'll share more in this, in this case study here that uh, we'll talk about in a bit. But let me throw it back to you. So what else should people know about understanding post-composition? Well, again, it, it, it's understanding where it sits within the whole manufacturing process, you know, this end-to-end -end chain. Uh, it's, it's knowing that it's applicable to near enough all applications as well. It doesn't have to necessarily be a personalized transactional type uh, application. As we said, it could be in packaging or labels. You know, we've seen massive growth uh, in those two areas, especially with uh, the COVID situation. You know, one of the strongest uh, growing areas now is, is packaging. And that increase of work, we've got to help customers take the hands off these processes. We need to help that automation. And that's where the chemistry platform really sits. It, it sits nicely in helping the communication of uh, the work come through the factory. And we also see lots of uh, mergers and acquisitions. So we've got plenty of uh, instances where company X has bought one, two, maybe three new companies. And all of these companies have their own unique workflows based on the products that they're used to delivering, based on the equipment that they've invested in, However, they're all now under one umbrella, and you know we, we can all think in our countries of, of great examples of this. How can we help create a streamlined and unified workflow for that business? So you know we standardize, and, and that's really powerful, it's really cost effective, and it's really efficient. And I think that's one of the big things that we've got to remember here is, is efficiency. It doesn't matter whether you're going to print, whether you're going out to e-channels through e-delivery or web portals. You know, being efficient, being optimized is, is absolutely critical. It, and so it, it brings to my, uh, Marianne, maybe uh, you can help us out understand, is, is it just about changing documents in post-composition or is our chemistry platform and, and what we offer, what we see people needing in post-composition more than that? Is it, is it really just tactical or can it be bigger? Well, sure. So the easiest is definitely tactical. So what's nice about our tool set is that if anyone has challenges with, you know, printers clutching and um, very simple things, our products fix things, you know, like lickety split that's already pre-built. Everything's right off the shelf, ready to go. Um, for the other, as you migrate, as we see customers migrate to Inkjet, as we'll hear from Lee Borns in a sec, um, what's great is he wasn't, he didn't have to change his front end processes. Um, but gained a whole lot by adding in post composition. So we took uh, the pre-printed shells, made them into digital PDFs. So now it's white paper in, color goes out. And so you, we'll just see some great uh, benefits um, in his case study that he'll share with us. And, and Jamie, maybe talk us through what, we have several sections, right, of our, of our platform. Um, maybe you could give the folks a little bit of a visibility into, um, I mean, we talked about changing stuff to make it uh, real time, like load balancing between machines or a machine goes down, you can do something else or work on another machine, have it the work actually be done on time for a customer. But what else can we accomplish with post composition? Is it is it just those little changes? It is those little changes, but it's also those much bigger, uh, bigger projects as well. And you mentioned there this tactical and strategic nature of, uh, of, of solutions. And the Solomar toolbox is, is, is great. It's fun. It's full. It's packed uh, full, of, full of solutions. And the nice thing is, is we can address a specific need or we can look at the bigger picture. Now, people often think with software, it's always going to be expensive. Now, for some strategic uh, implementations, you know, if you want to move into an automated document factory type environment, yeah, it's going to be a considerable investment. But there are a lot of things that we can address with, you know, relatively low cost solutions, such as PDF optimization. You know, how do we... How do we make those customer supplied PDFs more efficient within your organization? You know, we, we can drop products like ready PDF into the mix. So we have clear areas of specialism of our products where they sit in, in the portfolio. So, you know, potentially data stream transformation. Uh, it could be print management, you know, utilizing a single tool to drive a wide range of uh, print devices from various manufacturers. Uh, you mentioned about you know making changes to documents. 
Yes, we can make an awful lot of changes with our Rubica solution. However, it also helps enhance the product. So you can bring in new technologies and take advantages of new revenue generating opportunities, like potentially putting augmented reality onto a piece of paper, using the printed piece as a trigger to the digital world. You know, everybody likes that digital transformation. Huh? I guess yeah, and yeah, I love that. I and and I think also, you know, we should mention that it it, it also can then uh, lead to other solutions that are really probably outside of post composition in, in strict nature. But um, once you have a platform that you're really happy with, then you start to understand that there are, are ways you can expand your visibility and your tracking, your reporting, um, possibly even your storage, mm -hmm. because it all comes together and works together as a modular solution. And that I think it just opens a lot of doors once you streamline your your day-to-day -day working and know that you can answer the challenges, right? You can then move on to even bigger I solutions. <laughs> this whole uh, this whole topic of visibility and, the, and having people work remotely, it's quite alien to a lot of people. You know, they're used to being in the factory, being able to go down onto the production floor and find Mary Ann's job. We can't necessarily do that at the moment. So the SolidTrack platform gives that insight uh, to customers. So they, again, they can watch their jobs from onboarding all the way through into the post, either at a file level or a specific individual piece level through our piece level tracking solution. And again, this is all dashboardable as well. So we, we create a virtualized environment of, of, of the customer's uh, you know, manufacturing site, which is great because they can access that from their home through a web browser. They, they can even pick up their iPhone or their tablet and get that same visibility. And that gives a lot of strength to an organization to have their finger on the pulse 24-7, 365. You know, that, that's massively important. You know, I, I feel like, so we've been talking a little bit about, we've teed up what post-composition is, how it differs from, from composition. So Marianne, I'd love to, to kind of change over and, and let people hear from Lee Borns from Borns Group because that, that hearing a customer talk about how post composition has really changed their world, I think is really important. And he's a great customer advisory council member of ours. So Marianne, how did, uh, how did we get to know Lee? I know that you met him somewhere. Can you tell us a little bit more about how Solomar came across Lee and, and knew we needed to help him? Yes, I was at a conference and I did a presentation to commercial printers and talked about uh, the, the uh, progress or transition to inkjet and what would that look like a digital inkjet versus uh, what everyone had at the time. And uh, Lee was in the presentation, this was just in 2019, and said, you know, we really have to probably think about doing something because uh, we have a great process, you know, longtime customers, awesome company, but really hard to bring on new work because of our current uh, process. And so I encourage them to look at workflow first, you know, look at your job, look at the jobs you want to take on, and then, and then think about what the best devices would be to bring in as you move over. And so that's what he did. Um, as you'll hear, he went to an entire PDF workflow. Um, we were fortunate that he chose uh, Solomar as his uh, workflow tool for building his ADF. And then he separately chose a very large uh, color high-speed ink chip. And um, the results that he'll share are really just very impressive. I, I, uh, I can't wait for everyone to hear. So what we're going to do is uh, let Lee tell us a little bit more about his experience, not only with transitioning from older print technology to new, but also the results he saw from leveraging a, a post-composition and workflow software tool set. So over to Lee. Um, first of all, I'll introduce myself. I'm Lee Borns. I've been with Borns Group for 29 years. Um, we started in, in 1991, um, just completed my 29th year in, in May. Um, we started out um, picking up mail, a uh, mail pickup service. And um, you know, in the late 90s, we got into um, processing direct mail, um, addressing, inserting uh, early in 2000. Uh, we, we started in the, the print industry uh, to get into printing. Uh, so we, we offer you know both solutions under one roof. And then over the years, uh, like I said, we have invested in lots of different machinery, um, software, 
and this was no different. Uh, a year ago, in in August, we uh, we w decided to go with an inkjet machine, and then looking at it and looking at solutions, um, we needed something on the front end to drive that, and that's where we, we chose Solomar after a long search, um, and it was the best solution we felt for what what we needed, uh, and. It's really been, you know, exciting uh, getting that software going, getting things quicker turnaround times, things like that. We have a case study on our website with Boards Group, and so we're excited to have you maybe explain and share some of the great numbers and information that you shared in the case study uh, with us live. So yeah, this is a little shot from our website and kind of a high level of your workflow, Lee. So you, before what you were doing, and then what did the Solomar workflow software uh, benefit and bring to Boards Group? Sure. Well, I've seen the industry change for uh, over the years, and I think it's really changed in the last 10 years, uh, and significantly changed in the last couple of years for you know a PDF workflow. And our workflow was mostly PCL, and many clients were coming to us, um, statement clients, uh, lots of different clients um, that. You know, they wanted a, a full PDF workflow where they wanted to send us the PDFs instead of back in the, the old days, I guess, so to speak, you know, where we would get uh, raw data and then we would create the images. And we still do that, um, especially for very complex, um, complex jobs. But a lot of times now clients are coming to us and they want them, they want to send us PDFs. They want to create the images, which is fine. And with, um, you know, with the Solomar solution, it's really helped us do that to get to really a hundred percent PDF workflow. Um, you know, on, on the jobs that we still do produce PCL, by the time when it gets to we're we're making the jobs on the front end, and then we're we're bringing them through Solomar, um, and Solomar is converting some of those jobs to PDF. Um, many of them we're bringing PDF right into Solomar, and then <clears throat> we're doing lots of different things uh, with with the Solomar solution. Um, you know, one of the things, especially like on the statement side of things, uh, you know, one of the things we're, we're really doing is bringing in the householding. Um, so let's say it's a statement client and they might have, um, you know, multiple properties in the same town. Maybe they have two rental properties and they have one um, and they have their home that they live in. Uh, what we can do is we can key off of that address uh, with the the Solomar solution, and put all three of those statements in the same same bill, um, which is astronomical savings to uh, you know start statement producers especially. Uh, we've seen it the most in, in statements, uh, you know, where, where we've, we've seen up to 25 percent reduction in postage, which is very significant. So, you know, besides that, um, you know, one other thing that's really nice on the, the software side of it. We already were using uh, BCC software, so it was really nice that we didn't have to go out and purchase another software solution for for postal sorting. So that part there is, you know, it's working well, uh, where we can bring the files right into we, the already created PDFs. We bring them into Solomar, and then we'll just take out the address block where we do our householding, we do all of our uh, pre-sorting, and. Uh, you know, and then it breaks it up into all the different groups that we needed to break up into if it's uh, one page with return, one page no return, up to four pages. Um, we break out certain types of, of bills for clients too. Maybe they have, maybe it's a large utility covering many states and one state has a specific insert where we can key off of that and put it into a separate file or within the, um, the Solomar solution where we can add a a barcode of some type, if it's a 2D, um, whatever it is, OMR. Um, typically now we, we do everything uh, with a 2D barcode. And then one thing too, we we moved to inkjet technology, and it's something we had been searching for many years. And like I said before, we were looking for something on that front end um, to help with the PDF workflow especially. And I we found so many other things that's beneficial besides just the PDF workflow. And some of those is what I was just visiting about. But 
you know, I think a major part of it uh, is also, too, we didn't have a solution on the front end with this um, inkjet technology to get the, the files ready for the printer, so to speak. Uh, so that is something that Solmar has definitely helped us with tremendously. And in fact, I, wouldn't, I can't even think how we would do it right now without Solomar. Um, because what Solomar is doing is it's getting the files completely ready. If they're two up, six up, it's putting them in the, you know, whatever it needs it to be. And, but also, too, it's adding in barcodes for the perf lines, barcodes for the cut, cutter. Um, you know, and all that is added in Solomar on the front end before it gets to the printer. Um, where we've seen the, the revenue increase, um, you know, I think a lot of it's, or it's from cl higher client satisfaction, and we did this by doing surveys, but it's also helped us add new clients where they had really tight turnaround. Around times, so you know instead of taking uh, multiple days uh, for you know pre-printing a shell and then you know laser printing something where everything now, like I said, is more on demand, and it's it's gotten us into you know some different industries and some different clients that we really didn't have a chance to work with before. So that is where the majority of our, our revenue has has come from, um, but also too you know with the Solomar product you know, bringing through the PDFs and having a full PDF workflow like we do now, the quality of the PDFs are a lot higher and, you know, we're able to hit uh, spot colors better than we ever have before. So, you know, like I said, you know, a combination of colors, um, increased quality and, you know, increased turnaround times, you know, has definitely brought a lot more higher client satisfaction. We have seen, um, you know, a decrease in, in labor costs, um, overtime, things like that, just because the machine, um, you know, with the Solomar solution, we don't have to cut paper like we used to. Uh, you know, we would spend, on a certain job, uh, you might spend days cutting where all that is done now in line with the, with the barcodes that we can put on the piece um, from the Solomar solution. So just for example, cutting is just one thing, but I mean, it's been so many other things as well. Um, and I think a lot of that too, most of it, a lot of it is overtime, where we were waiting in the past for pre-printed shells a lot of times and would have to work overtime weekends, things like that, where now we're printing on demand and you know, there's, there's less of that um, sitting around time, so to speak, where we're printing on demand and um, you know, like I said, getting things out much quicker instead of taking days, now it takes hours. We have seen a, a major um, increase in uh, project turnaround time or decrease. Um, and I think, you know, it's originally we, we were measuring it around 60%, um, but it's actually, I, we believe it's higher than that, more like 70% now. But we're a lot of times, you know, over, with uh, the old, older processes that we had, uh, it was running, if, especially as a four color job, running it on. Uh, uh, four color web press, and then it would have to sit a day or two to dry, and then, um, then we would laser print it and then, then insert it. Well now, once the job is approved within minutes or hours, we're literally printing. 
and um, and it's it's once it's printed, it's we can insert it instantly. All right, so. Welcome back from that great conversation with Lee Borns, one of our great customers on our customer advisory council. It's always great to hear from people who are really using post composition tools and changing their business because of it. They're, they're real, real world experiences. So we have a lot of those on our website. I would invite you to check out our solomarsystems.com website because there are case studies for all types of industries and types of printers. Make sure that you look at them and find one that really resonates for you because every one of them has these kind of proof points likely. We, we really believe in these kind of relationships with our customers and making sure it drives value. So speaking of that, in our description, we had these four kind of areas. Uh, think of it as things you can think about and ways that you can take next steps to really evaluate your environment. And so we're going to talk about these. I'm going to throw one of these questions at Marianne here and then Jamie. But as you're hearing these, put your thoughts in the chat panel. We're going to have a Q&A coming up here with Morton and the team. We want to hear from you. We want your questions. We want to know what you're thinking about or how we could help answer things about post-composition, workflow software, or really anything print, printy, let's call it. So Marianne, a lot of printers are, we have heard from over uh, the last 12 months especially, have been talking about how their jobs are changing, how things, their work and orders coming into their environment are changing. And it's, it's really all about quantity and, and uh, volume. So can you speak a little bit about how the world seems to be changing and how that might be helped by post-composition? Well, sure. And as we've seen, as we saw with Lee, you know, he's getting more and more uh, large jobs, but also many, many large jobs that are small quantities that require personalization and also faster turnarounds. And so in the first year, you know, he have he's, he noted about 300,000 um, euro increase in sales just in the first year by being able to accept more jobs. Uh, other customers on our advisory council, for example, have recently said they used to have 300 jobs a day then 3,000, some have 30,000 now a day. So, you know, with, with many, many small customized jobs, they really want to manage these. The revenue opportunities are huge, but they really have to have good tools in place uh, to be able to take on this work and, um, and be successful. So. Yeah, because it's all about, you know, Lee was talking about how manual processes were really just limiting what they could do in their, in their, 29 year old business and this year they would be 30 just like Solmar is this year. It's crazy to think that, you know, such a, a strategic change could really drive so much more business for someone, you know, with software solutions. And you mentioned personalization. So Jamie, uh, you know, I'm going to tee up another question for you here, but I wanted to just mention this comment. So personalization is not just putting names on things. Think about it as you might want to deliver we used to have a customer that uh, did real estate and they wanted to personalize things for different neighborhoods. That's really more regionalization. You might want to deliver different kinds of print or different messages or different looks and feels out to different areas. And that's personalization. You've got to be able to manage that. You want to know that stuff is happening and is correct and is going out and being delivered. You want to be able to track it and report on it and know that, that your brand or your customer's brand is really being represented correctly. So personalization is becoming really important. Um, and it can be variable data, right? It can be what we call VDP. It can be putting someone's name on a, on a printed piece or on a water bottle or a package, but it can be so much more than that. So think about how personalization or customization, we hear a lot about customizing things. And how would you do that today? Think about that. Do you have uh, enough people to do that manually? And would that be efficient? Or do you have the tools in house that are doing that efficiently? Or do you need it to be done faster? Which Jamie brings me to this other point in our, uh, in our talk here about production times. Can, can the speed, like we heard from, from Lee, can the speed really affect a print business of how fast you get stuff done? Yeah, I, I absolutely think it can. Uh, and again, it's how reactive a business is to that change and the demands being placed on them by their customers. So, you know, we, we think about the changes that would normally take place. There, there could be other changes that we haven't thought about or maybe haven't addressed here. And it could be something as simple as a shift in the customer's preference for how they want it to be communicated to. So, 
you think about, you know, we all love getting our pieces of print through the letterbox, but it, it, you know, in many regions, many people are shifting to e-delivery. Now, we've got to be able to help our customers and we can help our customers make that shift. So they don't want to have to go through a whole new range of manufacturing processes and composition stages to create something for print, something for text message, something for a portal delivery. You know, we, we can provide solutions that take that single PDF file and repurpose it based on a customer's preference. And that, that's, that's about delivery time. You know, delivery time could also be, you know, how we can just speed up all of those individual processes for creating the document, and and the Solomar toolset has you know has great capability in delivering that. And you know, Lee paid reference to to, to increased turnaround time and increased speed. So very much something that's in our in our bag. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he actually said, um, you know, when we did the case study originally, he thought it was 60%, as he mentioned, but it ended up being closer to 70. Marianne and I uh, talked to a customer advisory council member who talks about this speed of delivering things, um, actually up in Canada. And what's interesting about his, his scenario is that their process is actually we're taking about 24 hours to produce this type of work that they needed for their customer. And with post-composition tool sets, he, uh, tool solutions and, and all sorts of things that we were able to do around optimization. Marianne, what was it, under an hour that he was able to reduce that to? Yes, his files, the turnaround time, yeah, went dramatically. He gained 23 hours back uh, on jobs that used to sit in process for long periods of time. And then his file sizes, uh, I recall, went from about six and a half gig to less than half. And so just think about moving those files around, even on networks in between his different facilities. Um, so just huge benefits in processing and managing uh, the data. I think another thing that we, we've got to address and be aware of is that, uh, you know, our, uh, our direct mail printer of yesterday is the packaging printer of tomorrow because our customers are actually diversifying the product mix uh, that they're offering. Uh, based on client demand, you know, how many printers now are all of a sudden in the PPE market, because all of a sudden there is a huge demand for it. And to pivot their businesses to be able to address those needs, you know, it requires tools to do that uh, efficiently, uh, to keep the cost low or keep the costs uh, unprohibitive that, uh, that give them that, that advantage to perform in that market. So as people look to diversify their offering, you know, Post-composition really does play a part in enabling those new techniques that they need to master. Well, and you mentioned uh, packaging, you know, so the unboxing experience is, is becoming even more and more important as we get deliveries at home. Mm -hmm. But even when you're in a store, the package uh, being pertinent to, to your areas is, is engaging. If, if one package is more relevant to, to where you live and what you uh, like and do, uh, you're gonna probably gravitate towards it. But think about labels. Um, so a lot of people like wine. A lot of people know of wine labels that come to life through, Jamie, you mentioned augmented yeah. reality. And people probably wouldn't think that you could use post-composition tools like what we're talking about to make things come to life, whether it's a, a, a flyer or a label that you're putting onto a package or the package itself come to life and, and maybe have a video about, you know, the company that you bought it from or something like that. There's all sorts of gamification you could add through augmented reality that way. But more than that, you can also manage just uh, the security. So with post-composition, you can make little changes to each area that you're sending stuff that doesn't have to be thought about up in the design phase and the composition phase. And actually some of uh, the large brands out in the world actually do do this where, where their labels for things like um, soda products, I won't mention the brand because we they don't need any help from Solomar, but uh, but you know they their bottles actually have little differences so that um, people who are doing inventory control can tell if bottles of, of soda are going from one border country to another. Lots of different ways you could leverage these post-composition yeah. tool sets. So, so 
I do want to cover this last bullet point before we get to the Q and A. And remember, if you're thinking about things, you have questions for us. We're going to be answering those coming up next. Marianne, competitive pricing can can post composition really affect a company's pricing? And and if if it can, how? For sure, I'd say a number of ways. So first of all, being able to process jobs faster is certainly one way. Um, with we have some integration tools with um, some DFEs. We can actually give them information or give the customers information on um, like ink and media usage and how much it's going to cost. So you can really get into some cost estimation as part of your process as well. So, you know, overlay that with the visibility. So now you have remote workers, so you know what's going on. Uh, our software allows for um, uh, alerts as well. So who, uh, who needs to know if a printer or a press goes down, if a job arrives, it doesn't arrive. Um, so you have all this security as well that, at your disposal. And I think all of that makes you more competitive. And you probably could also offer different turnaround times, right? So like uh, Lee was saying, he, uh, he, he improved turnaround times by delivering faster. It wasn't taking them days. It improved by 70%. So maybe you could start to offer different levels of service because you know you can manage when things can get done. Um, so you could say, well, if you need it in a couple of days, you know, we'll charge you this amount. And if you need a rush job, you know what your margins are better, right? Your efficiencies are driving uh, more profit margins so that you can then use that to leverage your offerings to be more competitive to the to the pretty competitive print market today, right? There's a lot of worldwide competitors now because of the web, right? And digital fulfillment. So hopefully we'll be able to answer all your questions, but before we switch over, what we wanna make sure you have Hello, Morton. Technology when it's best. <laughs> hey, we've, we've learned through a whole 12 months of uh, 2020 that uh, nothing, nothing is uh, out of the ballpark. So, you know, hey, that's why we're here live for, for the beginning and the end. <laughs> uh, I can tell you one thing that I have uh, learned from uh, the past 12 months, uh, not so much relating to um, to the pandemic, but to more to the fact that when you when you um, participate in webinars where you have that edge of being live, <laughs> that actually uh, contributes a little bit to being, hmm, what's going on, what's going on? Um, yesterday I had a session with Rico that went terrible wrong because Basically, a webinar jam have a limit of uh, of six uh, slots, and they wanted to extend it with four additional. So we thought that we could reroute audio and video with NDI directly into the application. Video was fine, no audio. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, yeah, the, it's fine if people can read lips. I oh mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if 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 latency is not such a big a problem, you might be able to. Well, uh, guys. Um, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, I mean, every time I learn about Solimar, I get, I get on a next level of understanding how complex uh, the, the, the suit of software you have done and how much it affects uh, your customer's uh, productivity. And I can't help think about that. It must be, <laughs> I think I, I, I maybe ask this question too often, but it's like, you know, every time you have software that becomes more and more complex, the marketing and communication talk track around it becomes more and more difficult because, you know, we live in a complex world and people need to understand the value you get out of it. And I think that you, uh, I think it was wonderful that you nailed it with a, in a mix of a conversation and also customer testimony because that was great. Well, and Morton, like, so as you listen to it, you know, what, you know, and I, I think we ha might have some questions, but what, what comes to your mind? You've been in this business a long time. It, as you watched it, what came to your mind about the people that you've gone and videoed and, and things like that? <clears throat> Good question. Um, to be honest, I think that uh, I would say confusion a little bit, to be honest, because I think that the market today offers so many brilliant solutions. So if I was a PSP, I would be uh, seriously wondering what direction to take and, and what 
takeaways that are the most important for my business. And I, I you know, I wish there was like a global product configurator where you enter all your uh, the things you need and then basically say, oh, here's your printing company, right? <laughs> because if you, <laughs> because it, you know, I think that's such an important thing. I, you know, Morton, there isn't really one of those, but that's where someone like my mom, Pat, who a lot of people know, she'll, she was going to do the print sample TV next. I know you're going to do a live spot next with her, just to touch base. But what she would say is the relationship with the yeah. vendors yeah. is is so important. And I think what I would tell people is make sure that you have those strong connections with anyone you choose. It doesn't have to be Solomar. I mean, we're here in a thought leadership role really yeah, to but, try to tell people, but, Jonathan, but it's that relationship. I, yeah, but Jonathan, I think that Solomar is an important supplier. Uh, first of all, but, I mean, not first of all, but on an even pace, I would say that it's very important because you do brilliant software that actually solve a lot of problems for people. Mm -hmm. But it's years. also <laughs> yeah, but it's also the, the 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 people in the company and and your and your dedication to the educational part of it because too often I think that some companies think that every time they have to talk they have to mention their company uh, in every sentence and just use it as a marketing thing and I, I think that tires people more out even than even more out than webinars so I think that your contribution to this is a truly educational thing and of course. We want to hear about the solutions that you bring to market because you put a lot of development and considerations into this, of course, right? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I one of the most common questions we get is, you know, where do we start? You actually said that. And I, I think Marianne and Jamie and I would say, really think about what's causing you uh, keeping you up at night? Uh, you know, are there things that that are causing your staff problems? Uh, is there pressure? Uh, we've we've started to really talk about is there pressure on your operators and your people on the floor because of how the world has changed in the last 12 months? And, and if you can just step back from the world, you don't have to know the exact answers. All you have to know is that you have pressure and bottlenecks in places that you'd like to solve because if you could solve them, you know you could bring more business in. And it's almost Almost every printer mm. I've ever talked to knows that they can do more, but mm. there's something limiting them. But I think, and I think that's a great to yeah. start. Go ahead. So, yeah, yeah. I, I just think there's one thing because we're in the final minutes here. But I just, I just, I just want to to touch upon one thing that I, you know, I was uh, actually uh, Pat was also at that uh, print event in Denmark uh, one and a half year ago. And I was asked to give a keynote in Danish, so it was not recorded, <laughs> uh, about um, uh, the, the, the state of the printing industry because I have visited so many printing companies. And I said, it will be totally unfair to, for me to try to do that because I only get the chance to visit the good ones, <laughs> the curious ones, the ones that invest, the ones that develop things, the ones that are you know on top of everything, right? And I think that the worst the worst thing I think, you know, for this webinar, for the webinars that you also participate in next week with, with Fraser and Marcus and, and with all the webinars and all the, I mean, in this pandemic has given so vast, uh, number of, uh, learning experiences and so few PSPs take the opportunity to listen and learn and how to understand how software, how hardware, how the digital mindset can actually help them developing businesses to be profitable, effective, and even more fun to work in. And that, I think, is a shame, to be honest. Oh, that was a bad one to, to close this on, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I, I, but I think you have a point. I think I hope people will send this replay to people. They think it'll help. We hope that if you know it, you know, all printers and people know each other through this amazing industry. So what we hope, I think, right, Jamie and Marianne, is that you reach out to us. Um, you can get to Marianne and I through CAC at solomarsystems.com. You can reach all of us by contact us at solomarsystems.com. We're on LinkedIn. We're on, uh, you know, Twitter, Facebook, you name it, we're probably there. So don't just reach out to us and, and have a friendly conversation. We really are more interested in sending, setting you on the right path. Mm. And then if we can help, we'd love to as a company, but, but there's a lot more to consider than just one piece of software, right?
let that be the last word for this session. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for our lady. Uh, Jean already left the building. <laughs> thank you very much. And I uh, I will also answer your email, Marianne. I'm just a bit busy these days, but yeah, I will get I'm back sure. to you. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Okay, Thanks, guys. Everyone. Thank, thank you very thank much. You, thank, okay. you. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Martin. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.